Okay, let's see if this works out this time. This works out this time. I've tried to film this 37 times and my camera keeps messing up. Ha. There's a pohara tree down the road here from me. Uh, this week, actually what I wanted to talk about, more than I wanted to talk about my progression, is I've gotten a lot of questions about, generally a lot of people uh, saying something about uh, their hand size. Either their hands are too big, their hands are too small, their fingers are not long enough, uh, they've got chubby fingers, they've got skinny fingers, their dexterity ain't good enough. All these different things about the hands, which everybody, I swear to you guys, everybody has these same issues. Foreign to your hand, it's foreign to everything you're doing. And so you've got to kind of reteach your hand that it can do it, I guess you could say. That's what I kind of wanted to talk about this week a little bit is uh, hand placement on the banjo neck. Also, uh, for me, when I started playing banjo, it really depended on what angle I held the banjo at, especially when you're first learning. Like, I mean, you don't want it up here like a bass player. You know what I'm saying? You don't want it up here, but you can have a little angle in your in your neck, have it up close to your head. Uh, it makes it easier to do it. First thing I want to talk about as far as that goes is the proper way to fret a, a string. What you actually want is your finger to bend at that first bend and to curl over and go straight down on the string. That's what you want on everything that you do, especially starting out. You really want to make sure that you get that finger bent over and straight down on the string. Uh, now what happens a lot of times is people will get their hand, uh, <clears throat> they want to hold, hold it like they're holding a, holding a stick. You know what I'm saying? You can't, and you can't do that. You, your, your hand almost has got to float around the neck, if that makes sense. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your wrist and you're gonna push it out that way. Roop, just like that. Now with your wrist out that way, you can't do it with your elbow up. You can't do it, you know, your elbow and you're trying to fret because it makes it a lot harder. So what I tell a lot of people is, if you take your elbow and you'll bring it down here, and I tell people to tuck it in to their side, but I mean, that's impossible to have it. Like, I don't mean tuck down here and you have to try to reach. I'm just saying, have your elbow down, down here. Um, that way your reach with your pinky is a lot easier to reach now than it is if your elbow's up. So that's a lot of people's problems in my opinion, doing the banjo. Once you get, once you get your wrist out and see a lot of this stuff later on, once it kind of comes second nature to you to do all this stuff, once it becomes second nature, it really, the importance of this completely goes away. And you may even change, like you may even bring your wrist down some once you kind of get used to the way your finger should sit on the fretboard. Cause I know a lot of people, they try to like, like this and, and squeeze in on the board where you, you've got to have a little, got to have a little gap right there, the fretboard and your fingers. But once you get used to it, it comes. I hope that helps people. There's no such thing as your hand being too big. There's no such thing as your hand being too little. I've never, ever seen it. It's just a, it's just something else if you distract yourself on the banjo. And also guys, as far as my progression, what I've been doing, I've been trying to, uh, all right guys, I just realized that I didn't uh, really give an update on where I was at on the, the Mountain Dew song. So uh, this is really slow. It's really bad singing and um, this is where I'm at. I can, uh, I can get through it. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get through one verse of it here. It's going to be excruciating, but I think y'all can. Do. That sucked. All right, here it goes. Not very far from me, there's a hollow tree where you lay down a dollar or two. Then you go around the bend and then you come back again with a jug full of good old Mountain Dew. Anyways, it's slow and it sucks, but we're getting there and I'm excited about that. Back to the regular Back to the regular scheduled program. That's what I've been working on. I've been working on strumming and then fretting. About 
where I'm, I'm at right now. I'm, I'm working on it really hard trying to get Mountain Dew down, at least the basic strum and getting my fingers. Uh, <laughs> Keep practicing at it until you hit it. That's what it was on the three finger banjo. Uh, being said, here at the end of the video, I just want to let everybody know after the first of the year, I'm going to try to do some changes up on my videos uh, a little bit. I've noticed a uh, trend going through my videos the past couple of weeks. Not that it's a bad deal, but it's not where I wanted to go with my videos. More of a jokey, have fun kind of kind of guy. And that's the way I want my videos to be. I want them to be fun, uh, informative to you guys. The past couple of weeks, I've noticed myself trying to give information and be more serious and like wrote, wrote stuff down and make sure I go buy a script and all that stuff. And um, it's just not as fun to me. And my editing on my videos, I've tried to really simplify that and I'm not real happy with the editing on it. Anyways guys, here over the next uh, month or so, you may see some changes in the videos. It's gonna be about banjo. It's gonna be about the claw hammer, but it's gonna be a little more fun. So, uh, guys, with that being said, I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. I think this will drop on Christmas. Uh, I wish everybody here a Merry Christmas. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful new year. Keep on a picking.